and welcome to another edition of Active Living. It's been a while since we've been on the air. Uh, COVID has done a little number on us, Jim. <laughs> yes, it has. I got my good friend Jim Robeck here, and Jim has just uh, completed a trip to Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan, right. And uh, he's going to tell us all about his trip. Welcome to the uh, show, Jim. Well, thank you, George. It's been, uh, you said, a real long time. I was glad to be back on the road again. It was something that we need to uh, get out of uh, the town and break away from this cabin fever we had for two years. So yeah, it was right. excellent, yeah. So just to give you a, a background, Uzbekistan, I, there's a map behind us here. If you notice it, uh, the country I went to is in orange. It's called Uzbekistan. You can see it's surrounded by four other countries, which is uh, Kazakhstan to the north, to the east is Kyrgyzstan at the bottom, and then Tajikistan, which is at the bottom, and then Turkmenistan to the, uh, say, to the left there, to the west. So if you notice, there's China to the right, and then to the north is Russia. So that's where the countries are located at. So just to give you an idea where this country's at. Uh, to give you a little background uh, of Uzbekistan, uh, we went for 12 days, and it's a Silk Road country that brought all the goods from China, and it passed through the northern part of uh, uh, Uzbekistan and also the southern part. The north went to Europe and then the southern part went to the Mediterranean where all okay. the goods came through yeah. from uh, China. Um, it took approximately 26 hours to fly there, oh. uh, which was a long way from Detroit to Washington to Istanbul, finally to Tashkent. Now, do you, when, you, when you take the 26-hour trip, Jim, do you, do you sit in first class? No. You don't no. have one of those no, seats no. that lay back? No. It'd be about $5,000, but these are cheapies. I go for $1,000. So. Okay, so no. you're, you're in the, you're in the, the cheap uh, seats. The, the cattle car in the back. Almost. For 26 in the middle, hours. Used, yeah, 26 oh, hours. Oh, my God. Well, it's not so bad because the one from Washington to Istanbul is long. This is around 12 hours but the rest are not too hateful, okay. so not too bad. So um, we arrived in um, Tashkent about 1.30 in the morning. Then we had to get a visa because we had trouble getting the visas and finally had to pay $160 for the visa, which was a pain because on the Internet it was supposed to be $20, but we had to pay $160. took us a couple hours before we got to the uh, hotel, like 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, God. Yeah, it was kind of late. So give you a little bit of uh, facts about uh, Uzbekistan. It's pronounced Tashkent. Now, when Russia was there, before they got their independence, it was called Tashkent. And basically, uh, Tashkent means Rock City. And uh, like I say, Uzbekistan became an independent country in 1991 from Russia. All those countries are independent now. Other than Turkmenistan, which is almost like uh, going to North Korea, you can't enter that country at all. Really? No, you can't enter. And you cross the border, you could be in, in deep pain there. So. Um, it's a country of about 55 million people. It consumes about 85% are Muslim, still 10% about Russia, and there's a few Jewish people there, settlement, and that's about it there. Uh, the main cities are nationally Tashkent. You got Kiva, which is about uh, 80,000 people. Then you go to um, Buhara, which is about 270,000, and then uh, Samarkand, which is about 520,000 people. Okay. So how does the size of that, that country compare to the size of Michigan? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say it might be double the size. You know, okay. if I look at the map here, I would say maybe three okay. times as much, between two to three times as much, okay. yeah. Uh, the education system is kind of interesting there. They have to have two sessions because they don't have enough classrooms or teachers. So there's the morning session, afternoon session for okay. the kids. Well, that's um, good uh, use of your resources. Yes, it is. Well, okay. I mean, it's they're limited. You know, they're, it's a good country. It's very westernized, so it's good because they do get a lot of tourists now. Transportation is good. They have good bus system. They have a good subway system. They got a rapid train or speed train there, so that's good for the country. Now they have the money situation, which is called SUM, or not in our language be SUM, but it's they call it SUM. Okay. So uh, the it's very uh, say high in inflation from the standpoint. A thousand SUM is worth ten cents, and this <laughs> is what you pay to get into the bathrooms. Everywhere you go, you got to pay to go to the bathroom. So they're cost you one thousand SUM, and so that's what the money is. Um, the wages, they only make between five to $700 a month and they have to pay for all their wage or rent and their food and everything else. And uh, Tashkent is a very modern, westernized city. Good banks, beautiful buildings, beautiful subways and uh, like I say, parkways and uh, the streets are fantastic. They are all um, basically got traffic jams. And one of the things that's interesting, 90% of the cars are Chevys. Really? And all the cars are white, just like when Ford said you can have a co any color car you want. It's like black, it's white there. <laughs> so Chevrolet had a plant there, and I guess they own only 25% now. Okay. Uh, the main issues for them is the cost of electricity and water. Water is very scarce for them. And so mm -hmm. it's very difficult for them at that point there. Uh, it's a, like I say, it's a super clean city. They have women. It's always cleaning the cities. They have these brooms. They're swimming all around these mosques and around the statues and everything else. 
Um, is it a communist form of government? No, it's democratic. It is? Yeah, it's very, okay. they got a prime minister. So they had elections while we were there, but you hardly even know what was going on. It was like 98% of the people voted. It was amazing okay. there. Yeah, so it was very good. So like I say, when I converted money from American to the Sume, I became a millionaire. I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh, transferred 150 American. I got 1.7 million Sume. So I was an instant millionaire when I yeah, got to that fantastic. country. So, so the city, or the country is made up of like 49% is... Uh, um, is basically city people and 51% is agriculture. It's an agricultural country. There's okay. hardly any manufacturing there. Okay. Um, uh, but they do have a Chevrolet plant. Yeah, there is a Chevrolet plant there. I, this is a one manufacturing area where they had it. Okay. Now, the, we went to sleep for a couple hours after we got to the hotel, checked in, we had about four or five hours of sleep, and then Samantha, my traveling partner, she had somebody who was a medical person at the hospital. She asked, she knew somebody in Uzbekistan, so they came and picked us up at noon and went to a Plav restaurant. Oh. Now, Plav is their national dish, and it's made up of uh, apricots and um, garlic, sp uh, sa uh, spices, onions, raisins, and uh, rice pilaf is their main dish. And everywhere you go around, there's 50% of the restaurants that all they serve is Plav. Okay. So it's P-L-O-V, which is excellent. And it's, uh, then you have the meat, which is either beef and uh, like lamb uh, fat is in there. Uh, so they're built, they're made in giant cauldrons or, or like Japanese woks. How's, uh, how's the weather there compared to? It was to between, uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember, uh, between 45 to about 60. So it wasn't, okay. too, it was perfect. It was good weather. So, so it was like, like Michigan. Yeah, it was almost like, exactly. Almost okay. like, I think it's in the same latitude there. So it was pretty okay. good there. So it's a land of kebabs, a lot of kebabs everywhere. So it's lamb, beef, or they call mints like a hamburger they put on a skewer. So okay. and a lot of vegetables, you have a lot of vegetables there. And then they have good soup, which is uh, one of the main one was Monty. And they have dumplings of all types, you know, so that was pretty okay. good for the food. And um, so from there, um, okay, then we went to day two. We, the first day we were in Tashkent, we went to a, uh, the monument. There was an earthquake there in 1966 on April 22nd. It happened at 520 in the morning, destroyed a lot of the buildings in Tashkent. Okay. So from there we went from that monument, it was erected by the Russians, and then we went to a... Um, a cast, cast Imam Square, where there's a beautiful mosque there, and they had the original Koran was there. It was actually uh, written back in eighth and ninth century. You couldn't take any pictures of it. Okay. So from there, uh, we went to uh, it's a place of of learning. Which is there's three things. Which when you go to uh, Uzbekistan, you have the mosque, the minarets, and the madrasas. The madrasas are the learning centers within the area. The mosque are naturally where they pray, and the min minarets are. You know the beautiful tall buildings that are there. So there used to be the call for prayer. For I didn't, we didn't see that happen. But they too have much like there. a church school, which is yeah, this yeah, other where the, the madrasas madrasa, are exactly, right. exactly. And it's funny because their their religion kind of follows ours because they said their Islam God, He created the earth in six days, and then His prophets were basically Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, Jesus, and lastly Muhammad. So okay. and then He rested on the seventh day, which is kind of parallel to Christian. Yeah. Uh, our, our life that we know of. Hinduism is probably the oldest uh, religion, and you got our Bible, which is the Christian, and which is the Quran and the Muslim, you know, basically. So we went to a bazaar there, we had a big market there where you can buy anything you want from fruit, vegetables, everybody, tr you know, goes and buys things every day. Okay. Everything you want from spices to candies to you name it, you buy it there. Meat, vegetables, everything. And then uh, after that, went to the subway, and we went through, through the subways, it was just beautiful. They're clean. They're spotless, you know, really? and unbelievable. Yeah, you and where do they get all the money? Is this all come from Russia when they were part of Maybe. Russia? Maybe, probably or, did. Or was did, a they, lot. did they tax the hell out of these people? No, I think they only tax like 19% is their tax. Okay. From what I remember, that's what it was. And uh, so, so that was, uh, I mean, beautiful. It was clean and very fast and proficient. And like I said, they got bus transportation. They got a lot of taxi cab drivers there too. So, But a lot of people own cars. The Chevy is a big thing. Okay. Yeah, a lot of Chevys in that. So. Okay, from there we went, uh, the next morning we flew to Urganch, which is on the western part of Turkish, uh, Uzbekistan, and from there we went through, this, uh, through the country, it took about four hours or so, and the roads were not so good up there. No. We, oh, they were like, oh my goodness sakes, but we finally got there, and as we we're traveling through there, there, one of the main crops they have is cotton, and that's their big agri agriculture area. They have a lot of green, greenhouses there where they uh, raise all the vegetables and grow it, and then they have the watermelons. There's six different watermelons that they produce. Okay. And they can uh, store watermelons up to four to five months and they're still good. Okay. And I don't know how they hang when all that stuff there. <laughs> so uh, so far, then we drove to what they call the, uh, into the Kaizomkom Desert is where the nomads live. 
So we went to what they call the yurts there where they live. Yeah. And they served us tea, coffee, cookies and all that. And they had something like the Polish uh, food, which is called pierogies, which I think are, which was really good. And we went to the, um, uh, and then within the Nomad uh, compound, they have a certain area where they do the laundry, where they do the kicking, uh, cooking, and then 40 people can sleep in one yurt. Whoa. Yeah, I don't know if they go feet to feet or what is I don't know if they, <laughs> they actually have 40 in there. And they had a playground for the kids and everything else. It now, the group of, that you traveled with, was this, how big a group was this? We only had 14, which 14, was a nice small okay, group. 14. Now, this is what they call a discovery tour with gay ones. A little more extra, but you get more value. Okay. So it maybe cost you like four or five hundred dollars more, but you get more meals and things of that nature okay. there. Um, so uh, so that way, and then we went to the top of the mountain. There's a lot of forts fortresses that actually travel all the way through uh, Uzbekistan and this one fort was above this village here. Okay. And there's like 50 of these different fortresses that traveled all across Turkestan because as the camel caravans went through there, they only traveled about 25 miles or 25 kilometers per day, around 13 miles a day. That's and all? they had, uh, yeah, that's it. And they, there was 43 miles between water. So they would well, travel two days to get water. Okay. And they always had like 10, oh, by 10 to 20 people, which were the people who did the training, there was always like 12 to 20, which were warriors that protected the caravans. Okay. Oh, yeah, so they had to protect them there, so it was pretty good. So, um, so in, and the interesting part about the uh, Kurds, they're made out of camel hides, and the reason for that is that it keeps the insects and the snakes away. They don't like the camel hides. Okay. And the insides are beautifully adorned. We'll have some pictures, you'll see them in there as we see them in there. Um, so, uh, so that's the camels, you know, like I say, and then from there, we left there and we drove to Kiva, which is about six, I think it was six hours away, yeah. It's a Silk Road city, uh, it's a beautiful place to be, uh, we had a beautiful hotel there, and within there they had a, this big citadel, which, you know, it's like a fort, they had these huge walls and things of that nature, and, um, uh, and basically they're of that particular citadel, which is all in service, like, like one and a half miles around, and they had mm -hmm. four gates that you could enter this the city, basically. So it was a walled city. It's a walled city, yeah. Yep. And there's a lot of mosques in there. There's like 60 architectural uh, type of uh, buildings in there with the mosque and the madrasas and where the kings lived and princes and that and stuff. Oh. So it was amazing. Again, once again, you'll see people uh, sweeping the streets because it's in the desert. So yep. they're always sweeping. These brooms are kind of weird, almost like branches, you know, but they do a very efficient job of cleaning really? the cities and, and all these mausoleums and everything. Uh, and within the uh, citadel itself, it's called the Cunha Arc. And then, like I say, there's a lot of uh, uh, interesting things that are in there where they actually made coins and they had these people just making coins for this particular time. And they also had silk money, which they made. They had also silk and they showed the paper money that was currently being used in there now. Um, but, but the stuff that you use, you had no coins. It was all paper money, right? Well, during those days, yeah. Today, it's all paper money. Yeah. There's no coins. There's right. no coins. I did get two coins that they used to have. Like, I think I got a, a 50 and a 100 and a 200, which okay. is worth zero, you know, yeah, basically. Right. But so fortunately, uh, they have a few of those which happened there. So uh, the castle itself, you know, the gates, I mean, the walls are like six feet thick, and is they're 20 feet high, so it's pretty hard to uh, scale it. And then basically, they always buried the dead on the outside of the walls. There were actually, you could see coffins on the outside of it. Okay. Yeah, and there, so the, the uh, dead are buried in, on the outside of the walls. I guess they didn't want to do it on the inside because maybe the smell, I'm not sure what it was, <laughs> but whatever it was. Then. Uh, yeah. So um, it's interesting too, in some of these uh, mosques and that, or where the princesses lived, or kings, whatever you want to call them, this one particular, I think it was in Kiba, I mean, it could have been in uh, Buhara, but he had his five wives. He was the first apartment, and then his five wives okay. were the, you know, from one through five. So the first one was the real one, and then the second, third, and fourth. And then the other side of the court was 40 concubines. Okay. So he, uh, he had a pretty lavish life, I must Sounds say. Sounds like this guy had it made. Oh, they do. I mean, they, <laughs> they had a very good life without a, without a doubt. That's uh, no doubt, without doubt with that. And then, you know, during- what the Quran says about that. That I don't know. I haven't <laughs> read so. Well, is it like the 40 virgins when you do something, you know, bad? I don't know. So I really didn't read up on, read up on that, so I really don't know. Uh, but within Kiva, it was real nice because we met a lot of people and they had all these bazaars where you can go buy things, like the stuff you see in the table here. Like you can buy these stockings, which are cam all made of camel hair, and they were like $3 or 3 for $5 or something like that. You can buy all kinds of really? things. I mean, yeah. And they're very clean. And uh, one thing that was interesting is that 
we had uh, four Taiwanese ladies that were with us. And they were funny. I mean, this one was Laura. She's from New York. And she bargained for everything. And she would really nail these people down to rock bottom prices. So right. they stopped at one of the um, souvenir places. And they bought these four round hats. And they come waltzing through the through the uh, bazaar there. And so I took a picture. And we'll, hopefully we'll see that in the, in this film here. <laughs> so, Jim, keep on. What, what, do you, what else happened on this okay. trip? It sounds well, like you had a wonderful time. Oh, it was. There's so much to see, you know. And they kept us busy. And uh, we really enjoyed it. Uh, Continue on in the city. We're in Kiva right now. It's one of the cities, the smallest of the cities. And um, uh, we did go to this one mosque called the Juma Mosque. There was 213 wooden pillars in there. Wow. It's unbelievable. They're, everyone's carved separately. It's absolutely okay. beautiful. And once again, we'll have pictures of that. And as we're going through a bazaar there, that uh, well, I took a picture of a camel, which is a two-hump camel, which they use, versus okay. a single-hump camel, which I think is like in Egypt, I think it is. Then we saw certain people, like the imam, he was walking through, we took pictures with him, and then, uh, like say, the four Taiwanese uh, ladies that was with us, and they had bought these hats, so I have a picture of that, and they were just waltzing through the street there, oh, yeah. having a good old time there. And um, then what we saw there was their seven-year-old child, he was dressed like a king, Really? And what it was for, they're going to have a party. You know what's going to happen to him? He's going to be circumcised. Oop. Yeah, at seven years <laughs> okay. old. And it's a big party for them. You know, it's, just, it's unbelievable. And say, so, wow, that's incredible. <laughs> He's all dressed up, you know, in white and everything else. And then we saw people praying within the mosque there. They do, do some praying in like 20 minutes, and then they go out and continue on. Um, and then as uh, we left Kiva, we uh, then went to what they call city of Buhara, which is about, and uh, in there they have some, a really uh, nice mosque there. Um, one of the main ones was the uh, Salmonoid uh, Mausoleum, which goes back to the 9th and 10th century. Um, and then the Kalon Mass, where there's, there's the huge minarets there, and the madrasas of, of what they call Abdul Aziz Khan. And so we'll have some pictures of that. And then the big thing is the Ark Fortress. Again, another citadel with an okay. article with the walls and everything else. And uh, Again, well maintained. A lot of mosque in there, and uh, uh, and it's just it's just fantastic. And like I said, we saw um, there was a lot of museum pieces there, and they had another uh, replica of a Quran in there also. Okay. And they had a prison within these walls there. They showed the prison of the people, or they prison them, put them in prison cells. And then on the back of the uh, Citadel, they had an actual prison where they had more, but we didn't go up there to see it. They just showed us what well, here is up there. So at right, the right. back of them all, they, they, that's where they were housed there, apparently. So I don't know what they did to uh, have them go to prison, but I'm sure it's the same thing that we ha they have there today. Um, and again, there was the Kalon Mosque and, like, see, the Salmonoid uh, Mausoleum we saw. So I'm just going to picture a few of these uh, mosques. And there's so many that we see everywhere you go to, you know, basically it's, it's a mosque country. And they're all uh, been renovated by the government. And within some of these mosques, they have these little squares. Each one of those squares have, like, 231 pieces of mosaic. And then they're okay. attached to the, the mosque and that. So the model work is unbelievable. And it's just stuff we saw on a Sunday uh, was... Weddings. We saw six weddings that okay. were in the party. There are all these women are all dressed in beautiful gowns, and okay. it's a three-day affair. So they're not actually married that day, but they do all the pictures and everything. So right. the second, and third day is when they have the ceremonies and everything else. Now we went to a lot of different. We went to markets in some of these cities there, where you could buy anything you want, from candies to fudge to apples to watermelon. You could buy anything you want. Right. And I think people do these. So you got the horse meat there. You got all kinds of meat that you want to buy. It's all fresh and. Uh, it's amazing um, the amount of food there and the amount of commerce that goes on every day. I mean, it, it's, it's a yeah. madness. It's unbelievable. Um, well, you're taking home fresh stuff every day. Oh, yeah, exactly. I don't think they yeah. have refrigeration, maybe, so maybe that's why it is. So I'm Could sure be. that's what happens, yeah. We didn't see a lot of uh, chicken. You know, we had chicken a couple times. We had it for one meal. They served it. It was kind of some slices of chicken, but hardly any chicken. And actually, no pork, you know, because it's the Muslim right. country, so right. we had to see that. But they had a lot of, I'm sure they had a lot of beef. Oh, yeah, beef and lamb was the two okay. key ones, yeah. There, and then, like say, the ground beef, which they minced and put on a skewer, which was good. It was pretty good. Uh, then we had a lunch at, uh, at a person's home, and they made the plob again. They made them in like a Japanese wok, you know, so they made it yeah. there, and they, how they served it and cooked it and everything else. They showed us how they did it. And it was pretty neat there that we, where she did it. Now, went to the market where they had the bread making, how they made the breads, and they had tons of these breads that are made like this much here, and they use this little instrument here to kind of 
put holes in it, I guess, so it rises properly. I'm okay. Sure. So yeah. this is kind of a neat thing, it was like a dollar, you know, so it was pretty neat there. Um, and then, uh, then we went to a f uh, dinner that night, and we had a folk show that was put on by uh, a family. Uh, one of the ladies did a dance for us, so we hope that we'll put, be able to put that in the, uh, in the Great. Uh, video here, so we'll see what happens there, because it was about two and a half minutes, but we'll do about maybe hopefully 10 seconds or something like that. But she was really nice. I fell in love with her, to tell you oh. the truth. She was, <laughs> she was nice. She was a pretty lady, to tell you the truth, and the food was real good, so we had a real good time there. Um, let's see if there's anything else in um, Buhar that we should talk about. Uh, no, that's okay. That's good. So that's it. Okay, then, um, then from there, now we travel to the last city, which is uh, Simmercon, which is about 520,000 people. Wow. And we spent about two and a half days there. And it's only a couple hour drive from uh, uh, Buhara. So it was a real neat place there. It's this on the Silk Road as well? Yeah, it's on the Silk Road too. This okay. is what they call, it was called the, um, uh, the Namak, which is called the central city means the meeting place. So a lot right. of, the, you know, caravans stopped there, you know, but then they went to these other cities, like you say, like Buhara and right. uh, Kiva, and then continued on out of the country there. Um, they were ruled like three different generals came through. The first one was Alexander the Great, so he actually conquered that city. Okay. And then you had the uh, uh, Genghis Khan, he came through there with the Mongols and he captured the city and he served for a while. And oh, geez. <laughs> Timur was the last one, was the last of the, was say, the princes that ruled in, um, in Uzbekistan and these old things here. And um, so, and even then, uh, Marco Polo came through there during the 13th century. But the city at that time was already over 2,000 years old. So, I mean, it was an old city as he started to travel between China, you know, and Europe. So Marco Polo traveled through there in the 13th century. Okay. And so, now, this other guy, this uh, Amar Timur, uh, he ruled for many, many years. And then his grandson, uh, Ulrich Breck, uh, ruled. And uh, he was involved with astronomy, a lot of astronomy. And one of the things about astronomy there, they were so far in advance that of some of the planets, they had uh, actually had the uh, dimensions and everything. I mean, like the location. Really? And it compared to our modern instruments today, they were off like about a sliver. Really? With their instruments and everything else, you say, how did they do that? You know, it's amazing. Yeah. I say, wow. And then one thing was interesting that one of our astronauts, uh, Edwin Aldrin, when he went to the moon uh, and uh, on Apollo on 11, 1969, he went to the crater to, it was named after one of the astronomers from Uzbekistan. Really? Yeah, okay. so that was interesting. They had a nice museum there with a lot of things that we could see there that the instruments they used, and oh, it was amazing how good they were, you know, how they did this, you know, and just, uh, it's just uh, unbelievable, it's just unbelievable. So, um, and then we went to the, um, after we left, well, we're still in, uh, as we go, went from, uh, Buhara to Samara, we stopped at a pottery place where we made pottery. Okay. And they made all this, well, like pottery like this here and like these things here. Right. And now they, each area has certain pottery and this one goes back about six generations and they had uh, unique designs and colors that they used in these various uh, pottery places. And uh, this one here, he shows how they made the pottery and then they, they had these big grindstones. They used a donkey to grind up some of the uh, rock there to get a powder to get the okay. colors. Yeah. They took it to the furnace, which are really old, and they go back, you know, as far as back as you can see. Just to, they throw a lot of wood in there, and the way they go, and um, and uh, now they make you know the big jugs. It takes yeah. them five days to make it. They actually build it in five sections. Oh, is that right? Yeah, they don't make it one at one time. It's in five sections. Okay. So the real towns you'll see yeah, sometimes right. the entrances. Right. So that was kind of interesting there. Um, Again, uh, that was in, uh, as we were traveling to uh, uh, Samarkand. And then we went to the, uh, which is the biggest mosque and the most beautiful city there. It's, it's just an amazing city. It's called the Registan Square. And that's where the picture that we see behind us right now is in Registan Square. Okay. You had the mosque and the two madrasas on each side there. And they were named, which were the names of them? They were the uh, Ulugbek, the Schurder and the Tia Kori. So there's the three buildings, like okay. the, mid the middle and the two to the right there. So, But that's basically the school. Yeah, the madrasas, okay. yeah. And then the mosque was in the middle there. Um, once again, you see all the mosaics there, and they had beautiful museums once again there. And as uh, we traveled around the back of it, then we went to another market. We went to about three markets. It was just interesting to go to these markets and mm -hmm. how the people had the commerce there. 
Um, then we, as we're in that particular regular. Did they negotiate there like he, they, like uh, you do in the, so in the much. Far East? Uh, you pretty well. It's it's so cheap. You don't even want to argue with it. Okay. Them, you know? I mean. You know, for a few pennies for us, or 50 cents or a dollar, you know, yeah, it isn't right. worth it. You know, I mean, you figure these people got a, you know, a tough living as to begin with, so you don't want to, uh, in fact, when we went to one market, we got like 14 cucumbers for like 50 cents, you know, I mean, unbelievable. Right. You can just eat them raw, so it's near the last day there. Um, and then, like I say, uh, the market, once again, you can get anything you want. It's called the Siob market that we went to. It was a huge market, and everyone is large as far as that's concerned. And then out of this particular one, when they're Registan, they had these people come out there dressed in the normal costumes of that period. Right. So we saw them going th uh, from the one building to the other. They're going to do a show on the square there, but we didn't see the show there. But uh, well, So hopefully we'll be able to uh, put a couple of those pictures of the people dressed in their uh, normal costumes there or the way they did it. Right. Then we visited a paper factory, how they made paper. Okay. What they do took was mulberry uh, branches and they scraped the stuff off of there and they used that and they pulver or they heated it up and boiled it and then they pulverized it and then they made it into paper. Whoa. And it was unbelievable how they did it. Went through like seven steps to make it. They put in the water and then you have to use a screen. You pull up the screen, yeah. you take all the water off and lay it out and you dry it and then you have to squeeze wire with a stone. You have to uh, take the water out of it. So it's a very uh, interesting process that you had with the, uh, making the, uh, the, uh, the uh, paper there. Then we went to a wine tasting, which was good. I didn't like the wine. The, the cognacs were very strong for me. You know? Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, cognac is not my thing. So, But it was good. It was nice to go there. We couldn't buy any wine there. She would just make some. They, they bring wines from other countries, and they you know, yeah. basically make yeah. the wine there. Right. Uh, then uh, near the end, they went to this one coffin. It's 130 feet long. And it was called the, well, I'm not going to give you the Uzbekistan name. It's called the Tomb of Daniel. Okay. And it almost goes back to like Christianity. We think it was the tomb there. And they, it was 130 feet long because they were, the reason they did it, if they, any robbers came, they would know where the bones were at within that 130 foot coffin. Okay. So it's laid out just like the Lion Buddha in, um, um, shoot, I can't think of the country now that we went to that was in Thailand. So okay. they had a 138 foot lion Buddha. This was 130 feet, but then you're supposed to grow at like five centimeters every year. So it's only 130 feet now. If you go back 2,500 years now, it'd be like 125 feet or longer. I don't right, know what it would be, right. but that's I don't know what happened there between then and that, uh, whatever they had that theory there. So, um, so the, um, tourist police were always there. We went there with, uh, per particularly at that mine, but they had an area where they had the, uh, holy water was supposed to cure things, things like rheuma rheumatism, you know, you got bones oh, and yeah, all right. that. So people went up there, you know, and they kind of did their thing, you know, and hopefully they can cure some of their ailments there. The tourist police within the country are very uh, nice. I mean, I had a nice picture with a young lady there, and I put my arm around her. She, uh, she but threw it away back. So you can't do that, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> so we got. I, I, I shouldn't have done that. You got to so. be careful, Jim. Yeah, you got to be <laughs> careful. Exactly. So, um, and then, uh, like I say, then a uh, couple of things. Maybe the um, couple of words like Ramat in um, Uzbekistan means thank you, and if you say uh, Chari means goodbye, and if you say Salom, which is good afternoon. Mm -hmm. A couple of words. I mean, it just is hard for us to uh, speak their language, but it was pretty good. I mean, it's pretty well the same. And then. Uh, there was two kind of signs that we saw there. The one said, I'm going to spell the word, and you can decide what, how to say it. It's spelled G-O and then S-H-T. So if you say what that is, but actually it's a meat market. Okay. It's, it's pronounced goosh, but not what I'm saying, okay? So just remember that. Then the bathrooms are called uh, Hojat Hanas, and we'll have a picture of that with the... Um, with the bathrooms there. So Jim, and then we, we're, 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 we're running out there. of time quick here. Okay, just the last thing then. Okay. And then from there, we left and we took the bullet train to Tashkent, and that was the end of the tour. End of the tour, huh? Yeah, and then while well, we great. had to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to go to the airport, unfortunately. So. Sounds like you had a great trip. Yeah, though. it was a great trip, George. I mean, I'd recommend right. that to anybody from that country. I mean, you shouldn't be afraid of it. It's super, super nice. Okay. Well, listen, thanks for joining us on uh, Active Living, and uh, we'll be talking to you after your next trip. And your next trip is to where? I'm going to Maldives next week. Next week. Next okay. week. Yeah. We'll see you when you get back. When you get back, exactly. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.